All right, guys, welcome to today's lesson. Uh, we are going to do a Harkness discussion. Your homework was to go home, look at the samples that I sent you on Jupiter, and consider each sample on its own merits, on its own strengths, on its own weaknesses, and as well as to consider each sample with, along with your own sample against the AP rubric. So we're going to talk about that today. Um, I hope you've all come prepared with something fun and interesting and intelligent to say. And um, if you look at the board over here, these are our three objectives for today's lesson. Uh, objective number one is going to be to evaluate the topics that were used in this argumentative essay. Okay, look at your topics, look at the topics that your friends wrote about, which topics worked really well for this essay, which topics didn't work as well, maybe didn't have enough examples. Uh, objective number two is to evaluate the structure of the essays. Okay, the argument. Did each essay have a good counter-argument? Did each essay um, have an argument that really related to the topic? This is significant because this shows that. Okay, so I want you guys to discuss the structure of the essay as well. And then lastly, uh, we're going to also assess each essay on the AP rubric. We've done this before, maybe not for the argumentative essay, but we've certainly done it for the rhetorical analysis essay and the synthesis essay. The rubric is pretty much the same. Just to remind you very quickly what our rules are for a Harkness discussion. Every student must engage constructively. Okay, so contribute meaningfully to your class. Remember, this is going to be a graded assignment, and the entire class is going to get the same grade. So if you are contributing constructively, if you're contributing something that's interesting and useful, uh, I'd be really happy to, to see that. Students should refer to each other by name. Okay, what do you think about this topic? I don't know, Harry? Or um, what topic did you choose to write about, Sherlock? Students should refer to the sample text as well as their own essays. You should all have that open in front of you on your laptops now. Students should make notes and continuously revise their own essays during the discussion. So if someone is busy talking and you think of a really good idea, maybe you can take uh, uh, some notes at the bottom, type a quick uh, a sentence and say, oh, I want to talk about this next. Remember, guys, this is not a competition. It's teamwork. It's a class discussion. So the success of this discussion will rely on how willing you are to, com to contribute and is your friend contributing? If you notice that someone is being a bit quiet, just call out to them and say, hey, um, I noticed you haven't uh, said much. What do you think about this? Or what was your topic? What score did you give this essay out of six? So I'm going to put a time limit of 30 minutes onto this um, uh, discussion. And we can break it up into the following three parts. The pink slide is for the first 10 minutes. So I'm not going to stop you guys. I'm not going to say, oh, your 10 minutes is up. You should move on to the next discussion. These are just approximate um, ways to look at, at this discussion. So the pink slide is the topics. Okay, What topics did your essay focus on? Were they useful in helping you answer the prompt? Did anyone use the same topic as you? These are the questions you prepared for homework. Okay. After the first 10 minutes, I'm going to switch to the green slide, that might be a good chance to start uh, looking at the structure of the essay. Okay, were there any um, structural errors? Do you think there was a solid argument, counter arguments, things like that? And then the last 10 minutes, I'm gonna switch to the orange slide, and that might be a good time to start looking at um, you know, the assessment. The, the AP rubrics, which essays got a, a one for one, which essay got a one three zero, uh, and see if you guys can find consensus on that. All right, great. So are we ready to go? Are there any questions before we start? Okay, great. So I'm going to be over here recording uh, 
um, everything on my piece of paper, and I will send this copy to you after the lesson, so everyone can have a, a look at what he said. Uh, keep an eye on the clock there um, on the board or on your computer. I'm sure we're going to have a great time today. <coughs> All right, so let's see who is brave enough to begin. Since no one wants to speak, I'm going to make a head start. Um, so um, let us talk about sample one first. Or rather, let's not talk about sample one. Let's talk about like basically the themes um, that have been common throughout these um, essays. I have noticed that several of the essays use um, usually um, historical events or um, inventions in technological breakthroughs in human history to justify that um, you know, taking the necessary risks and wandering into the unknown can yield great results. Although, um, one thing that I've also seen is that um, for many of the samples, most notably for like sample five and sample one, I found their counter arguments somewhat tenuous. Um, and yeah, I'd like to know how everyone thinks about like basically the themes and how, how, they, how the um, students who have wrote these samples have organized um, the overall structure of their passage. start with the contextualization part. Like, um, I found in from sample one, two, and three, is actually um, this student uh, list more than what they were going to write in the later passage. They also gave examples, uh, like the first passage, it says the discovery of electricity and machinery. And also, like what just Harry Z has talked about, um, the sample two and three also mentioned some other examples to um, in history to elaborate on their appoint, uh, opinions on it, uh, embracing the unknown. Well, I found it really um, vivid as a good example that everyone knows is uh, a very strong evidence or a very good beginning to start of how people started to try something new and how it affected human history. So um, I think this is a good way to start the contextualization part. Well, what do you think? Um, well, I think, um, for example, I'm currently looking at sample one, and I saw um, like two of these examples. Like in e, uh, the author mentioned in the essay, it was all about like uh, like advancements of, for example, like in the 16th centuries, um, and and also from a mathematician. Like those kind of works are uh, kind of. Uh, similar in aspect, and um, it might um, like reduce the effectiveness of um, proving the argument. I think actually there is a lot of reason for a lot of students choosing to write about historical contents in this essay. Since we need to discuss the problem cause for all the events uh, before we choose, and in fact, this is quite easy to write if you choose historical content. So sometimes we always compare the points and problems and we are thinking about whether the advantages and the disadvantages is in, is in the same level. But if you choose some small events like for one person or one company, uh, sometimes we can find that sometimes what they did is beneficial for the society, but likely um, some kind of harmful for themselves. And the problem costs are not in the same level. However, if you choose historical contents, it would be uh, quite possible that the benefits and the disadvantages are in the same level. And this is quite um, easier to write about. But in fact, that has a question that I think whether it is also okay if 
the Democrats and just just have a bunch of just like marketing in general. Well, we can actually talk about like what uh, what we ourselves like wrote in like our own essays, so that we can that we are interested to say. Actually, I want to talk about some things, similarities between sample one and mine. So uh, in sample one's uh, last main body paragraph, uh, he or she talks about like something about uh, plastic and its pollution. However, in, its counter, uh, in his counter argument, uh, it just says like not to mention the blah blah disaster as well as crude oil spill over the ocean, which leaves every irreparable marks on earth, however, to view blah blah is, uh, I cannot see how the benefits of taking a risk outweigh its, uh, its, harm, its harm. However, in my, in my uh, essay, I just, I just like uh, write something about, maybe some factories can uh, avoid this kind of problem through uh, proper manage management of the uh, release of some pollution. So I think it is better to explain more clearly. What do you think about that a lot? Uh, and I think that there do have, in, in this sample, there do have some paragraphs such as kind of something is strange, a logic, and I kind of cannot understand. And, and in the sample part, sorry. And I see that the first paragraph is about that the black pink. And after it's kind of, and praising that the Blackpink made a lot of innovations in the music industry. It's, it is kind of making a counter argument like that some Koreans do not think their own culture should be rep represented and promoted by foreigners. And I do think it's kind of a little bit strange, and I, and I cannot see very clear connections from this kind of thing. I think. <laughs> Whatever. Okay. After um, comparing my um, my essay with the samples shown here, I realized several common problems with these um, samples uh, compared to mine because obviously my my mine is superior to them, and therefore um, after after my um, very very um, experience explicit analysis, I find that the two major problems of uh, those samples come from their reasoning. Um, one, one thing that I found common throughout the samples is that for, for some of the examples or reasoning points that they have used, they focus on um, making, let's say, innovations rather than taking risks or having anything to do with unknown. For example, it's just um, for example, in sample two, like for the last, uh, the second last paragraph, it mentioned how um, Bruce Lee uh, got involved in Hollywood and was ma managed to depict Chinese um, as those who are, you know, not evil and not weak. Um, but that is really just doing something that is somewhat revolutionary, or it's, it doesn't really involve taking risks. Another thing is, for, for paragraphs that have used more than one example, I generally will find the reasoning rather loose, and thus I will not give those samples very high points, um, because using multiple examples doesn't really contribute to a single point and makes the logic rather, well, um, disassociated with each other. For example, in sample one, um, in the second last paragraph, it mentioned several examples at once, plastic contamination, the atomic bomb, the Hindenburg air disaster, like those are multiple things. And like even if you put um, one example, one of the three examples used in this paragraph, and you use one example for each of the other paragraphs, it would make a lot more sense than to stuff all the examples in one paragraph. It's not very convincing that way. Jonah? And um, still sample one. Um, like for the second and last paragraph, the same paragraph as you mentioned, um, the general theme of the passage is to promote um, exploring into the unknown. However, the um, last paragraph begins with a thesis statement that um, like even the examples are to prove that 
um, exploring into the unknown have several um, downsides. Um, although there is um, there is a counter argument in this paragraph and lead it back to um, the benefits um, overwhelms its drawback. Um, I still think this paragraph doesn't make sense. Okay, I have a question also on my own writing. So, how we can demonstrate the benefits of risk and other ways the negative effects since we still uh, list some negative effects? Look at the sample one that uh, the writer uh, lists a lot of negative effects and then he or she just says that the uh, advantages outweigh the disadvantages. But I don't think it have an uh, effective comparison. So how we can uh, do the effective comparison to or to state our own station? It shows that people who dare to explore the unknown and greatly embrace it are often rewarded what they deserve. But actually, I don't think this analysis fits with this evidence very well. And if if he or she wants to say that the benefits outweigh the harm, it can he or she can say say that at that time the churches the churches want to use the earth in the center to control and maybe the publish of people centric theory make the feel the pressure and maybe they cannot control the people's mind or so on. But also no matter at the time changes the a scientific principle will prove now but the church churches does not exist at this time. So this is actually the point I made in my essay since I write the human centric theory as well. So, what do you think so? Um, I actually want to add some opinion about Chelsea's is because I find um, there are some examples that only show the advantage of taking risk, but not the disadvantage. Um, as we know that everything, ha everything has its positive and negative side, I think this example should describe its shortcoming and cause to solve them. Uh, for example, uh, in the sample three, we can see that the first example it just say the GMO's uh, benefits and show the unexpected un un significant advantage. However, on the second example, it says um, both sides of the risk, so I think it but it is better than the first example. So, what do you want to say about? to talk about something about sample five. Um, in this sample, there are several paragraphs can be evaluated a little bit. Uh, I think for the uh, paragraph two, the author just kept introducing Blackpink and didn't talk a lot about will this group actually do something beneficial to the society or the, to the mm -hmm. unknown field. And just like um, paragraph three, um, um, she also just um, introduced the innovation and did not talk a lot about how this innovation can be beneficial to the human or the society. Um, I want to add to Zoe's point about sample three. I think this is perfect. <laughs> like, um, it, it is kind of the strategies when we are writing some things. <laughs> like, uh, if we are thinking about the counter argument. We need to think about uh, like how we can um, fight against a counter argument. Like for the GMO part, if you present a counter argument, it may be really difficult for you to fight it back. Like uh, if you say the GMO has some healthy risk. So um, it is clearly that the uh, writers um, um, put a lot of attention to this point and try to eliminate such, such risk. Therefore, he, uh, although he didn't really present the counter argument in sample one, but he still use that in sample two and uh, oh no, uh, in the paragraph uh, four and three, yeah. And especially the, the, the third one, like it talked about uh, the risks that Marco Polo travels to China, but like how um, it first presented that Marco Polo may uh, bring 
the Western colonizations to the uh, East Asia, but later the writer write about like how um, this this is actually cannot be really blamed on Marco Polo's and how um, the uh, historicals and economic and cultural uh, influence of Marco Polo's uh, trip outweighed its risk. So it is just so perfect that um, everyone should study for this. In my opinion, sample three is one of the worst. <laughs> for example, the second paragraph doesn't even specify if you want. Um, no, the the yeah the third one, the third example, um, the China and Marco Polo one. Um, do you consider Mar Are you considering Marco Polo traveling into China is exploring to the unknown or? China's inventions is unknown. Is ex um, is an act of exploring to the unknown. So it said very clearly that. Uh, wait a second. Ignoring the tremendous difficulties and danger, trouble of, of traveling to Marco Polo, he persists his journey to China. So it um, like in the first sentence, it, um, the author also described about it is a remote and a myst um, mystical. Nation, which means that it is uh, unknown. So it is uh, like a, a, a hidden way of things that the Marco Polo is trying to explore the unknown without really pointing out that words. So it is it's just <laughs> a masterpiece. Um, I also have some criticism to make about paragraph <laughs> paragraph three of, of sample three. <laughs> so here's the thing: there are several issues with this paragraph. Number one, it's it, since it's talking about um, the um, American Independence War, it has the years wrong. Like it's not the 1600s; it's the 1700s. <laughs> uh, as the writer of sample three, students should not misinform the reader. That is very important if a historical event. Is to be illustrated. Furthermore, taking a, furthermore, deciding to wage war against another country is taking a risk, but is not venturing to the unknown in any sense. It is merely taking a risk. And although good results did yield, it doesn't really form a it doesn't really form a like argumentatively contrib contributive argument to what you're writing about, which is venturing into the unknown, even though it is it is talking about taking a risk. So the things uh, have to connect together. Also, for sample three, I agree with what jo with what Jonah said about um, you know like it is it is the Chinese invention that is truly the unknown and not necessarily China itself. Also, there's a spelling mistake, <laughs> there's a grammar mistake on uh, the third the third last sentence of paragraph three, which you know we can't blame people like Marco Polo who chose to take the risk to explore the new world as they didn't know how history evolved. Like like. First of all, it's evolved, and also they didn't know how history evolved. And anyway, yeah, that is my opinion. And also, I want to talk about sample four because the examples in sample four I actually found rather interesting. Um, it uses historical examples mostly, and I think it is fairly well at um, developing its argument. What do you think, Mycroft? Both samples they use historical uh, historical uh, evidence, and I think these evidence uh, make sense because we human beings already know the result. And since uh, the essay is focused on the value of exploring the unknown world, and it is proper to use those historical examples. And uh, um, in the I agree with Minecraft. Um, and I think there's another way to develop our essays. We can focus on several aspects, um, such as we can uh, write a paragraph about technology and another paragraph about uh, history. And I think this can uh, uh, de develop our uh, essays more and make our illustration uh, more convincing. Um, yeah. That's my opinion. What about you? 
Uh, Harry. And I want to talk about the same too. Uh, I think overall it has a good structure. Like uh, for the first paragraph, it uh, before the thesis, it just lists some daily examples of cake and grease that most people may agree with, and I think it is a good context and order. Uh, next paragraph, it talks about the agricultural technology, and he just uh, illustrate it clearly and have list several examples. And I noticed that in his third paragraph, it has a good transition, like in addition to stomach's need, humans' mind is always ready to be filled with new ideas. It's a, it, it just connected with the first paragraph, and so I think overall, it's great. What do you think, Henry? Yeah, actually, I want to uh, ask a question that since all the examples are uh, uh, right uh, examples uh, during the past, and do you think maybe <laughs> we can write something about uh, to about the future? Since maybe some countries do some decisions, and you do, and you from your uh, maybe what you saw about the past, and you can assume that. They can have some benefit. They can be have, uh, this unknown can be beneficial for the future. <laughs> but I'm not sure whether this statement is good or not. <laughs> but if you do not know whether it's successful or not, how can it tell it's beneficial or not? Yeah, I agree. Yeah, uh, it's mentioned that it's proper to use some historical events because I think it's known by most of the people, and uh, so it's known. Uh, the the example may seem to be more supportive to your claim. Um, it's more convincing. But if you are saying something like it may be useful for the future, it will seem very weak and it may fail to support your essay. Um, and as I noticed, the PowerPoint has changed the page and we maybe we can discuss about the source for the sample. Nietzsche would make historical events and biographies of people are excellent examples because they are well known and have a long history and therefore are persuasive. Well, however, many new and up-to-date aspects such as the pop music are also good choices of examples. Uh, what about you, Esther? I think, as Tony said very well before, the points where the article shines are including different perspectives. So. I also include different perspectives in my own essay, which is sports, scientific, and music. And about the structure in the sample too, the student responds to uh, the prompt with a like solid thesis, um, and every paragraph is immediately followed by the counter argument. Um, and all all of them, I think, could explain how the evidence support the line of reasoning. Um, one more need to be mentioned is like the third paragraph about, about the Bruce Lee. Yeah. I think it is partially subjective and could not represent the fact that trying different things could benefit the society more than harm. So I think if for this sample, I think it could worth um, one point for the thesis statement and one point for certification. So, So, what does which sample does everyone think to be the best sample, and which one is the weakest? Does everyone have an idea? For me, it's probably sample one. I feel like the reasoning part is rather underwhelming, and the example that you use, I don't find them very convincing. And the second last paragraph, aka the paragraph where you deliver your third reason, is kind of just discombobulated. So, I would give it like maybe a one to one or a one to zero. And to extend on Harry, Harry Z's point, um, I find sample three also quite weak, as um, in paragraph three, the, uh, where the author discussing the American independent war, um, he, he was actually, uh, he did present a counter argument speaking that uh, during the war, lots of people were killed, but that was uh, negligible. However, he did not give further evidence like how many people died or 
uh, how the speaker client influenced uh, the, uh, the later development of the United States. Mm -hmm. Or compared to that, uh, other essays, for example, sample two with uh, its first body paragraph also discussing genetic modified, genetic, genetically modified food, uh, presenting an, uh, a thorough description of how GMF has influenced human population and how uh, the risks of GMF have uh, have improved to be successful. Well, compared to that, uh, the body paragraphs of sample three is extremely underwhelming, and I would consider it to give it a two or three points for, probably two for its uh, body paragraphs, with one point for its uh, thesis statement. And uh, cons considering that the author does give uh, some arguments and uh, his structure is well developed, I would consider giving uh, sample three one point for its uh, sophistication. Yeah, I think it's a pretty fair score. Um, the, I think sample three is okay. It, it's just solid. Um, the examples it uses, especially in paragraphs, paragraphs three and four, um, aren't the best, but the, the, the reasoning is fine. I think the biggest problem of sample three is the first paragraph. Um, like. I disagree with what Harry J said about GMOs being, the, since GMOs are very controversial, presenting a counter argument very, wouldn't be particularly easy to counter back, as in to re-justify why GMOs are good, um, that um, it is okay not to present a counter argument. But if you don't present a counter argument, then um, readers will basically see um, the, the example that you provided here uh, and how you describe this example as uh, being able to justify that venturing into the unknown is a good thing as um, a subjective opinion since you since you're not providing any like any other perspectives on how they see GMOs yes well GMOs are controversial but that doesn't mean e either either the author should change um, change the example or um, find something else about GMOs to argue about, as 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 um, what sample two I think has done. You could mention the health uh, aspect if necessary, because um, the health concerns of GMOs have largely been addressed in modern day, in modern times. So um, uh, that is certainly something that the author of sample three can improve on. Um, again, I want to divert our attention to sample four because. I, I personally would give it a high score because purely because of, because of the examples. I really like the examples and how it is able to present multiple facades of you know why taking risks is beneficial and both a both from a historical lens, a business lens, and you know uh, a political lens. It's a rather comprehensive uh, passage in terms of argument development. There are three things I want to correct Harry G. First of all, <laughs> according to Google, it is during the sixteenth. 15th and 17th centuries that European countries started to colonize this, um, to start their colonization of the world. So yes, the, the, the issue is the, the example used here is talking about the independence war, which was in almost mid to late 18th century. But it, it is true that in the 17th century, European powers started to colonize the Americas, but it is only after, since the, the paragraph explicitly mentioned the 13 British colonies in the United States, that would be certainly in the 1700s, which would render the 1600s statements wrong. But the sentence after says, despite most people in the colonization, so basically the also want to talk about most people in the colonization first, despite the uh, independent war. And the second point is about GMOs. I do already think that if we mention the health problem, uh, like it will be fair, like in the sample two, um, if you said that people are concerning, um, I think, Yes, uh, I think it is good good point to mention the health point, but like we should mention things like um, because people are concerning, so um, less people are buying GMOs, or, or like it has some economic um, drawbacks. Well, if they also just say that um, some people are concerning, but later uh, this problem has been addressed, then it is not a drawbacks at all. 
Fine, but even if you do not consider the health issues, you can mention how GMOs yeah. pr potentially, you know, promotes promotes current currently unsustainable agricultural practices like using way too many um, chemical fertilizers or pesticides. Yes, that even that as what what you supposedly claim to be a controversial aspect of GMOs can be can be used as a counter argument because you can say like all the workload that um, farmers are able to free themselves from by employing GMOs, um, the benefits of that far outweigh the environmental damage that uh, that GMOs can potentially lead to. And it's not even the GMOs' fault, it is the fault of traditional agriculture practices. Certainly a better counter argument, or there is no counter argument, but if there is one, some, something better than health can be developed and implemented into the paragraph, which would make the overall argument stronger, which would perhaps make sample three achieve a higher score. Um, and now, I um, want to talk about sample four, as I previously <laughs> said. So, the first thing that Harry's indicated wrong is actually about, if we need to mention about uh, exploring the unknowing every passage, then we are just repeating ourselves. You're not and repeating yourself, you're simply what is like referring back to the original argument. The there is a necessity for you to connect your reason to the original topic to let the reader know that you're not off course. You, your yeah. argument has to stay germane to the, to the central idea of the passage, which is taking risks to venture into the unknown, which paragraph two and three have not necessarily achieved. If we just saying that taking the risk, what did the wrong of not saying exploring the unknown? Taking the risk may not always coincide with exploring the unknown. But indeed, as it is already said that it is a remote and a mystical nation, that already says it is an unknown without saying that words. Well, I can um, make a statement about par paragraph three of sample three. As uh, the United States, we're not the first country to fight against colonization, and uh, there. Uh, uh, the uh, the tyrant administration of kings, like as we've learned in history class, France was way way ahead of the United States in fighting against its king, uh, and the United States was after uh, what the uh, United States fought their independence for after what uh, the French people did to their king. So this is probably not the unknown, but just taking the risk and taking the risk and. Uh, following what others have done, so I suppose this sample, uh, this example sample three has made, is not efficient enough. Do you mean that only the first one is exploring the unknown? Okay, I like to interrupt Harry J and um, <laughs> you no know, debate right here because we need to wrap up with the discussion. I do believe. So let us um, basically discuss what we think of the scores for each sample are and which one is the best example. We kind of discussed which one is the weakest example, which uh, we have our opinion split between <laughs> samples one and three, but, but let us discuss which one is the best example and give a brief score for the remaining sample. Um, okay. Tommy, would you like to have a word? You know, I, I agree that sample four is the best sample and Russia has at least worse five points and I would mention the rest of I think the most um, worst sample should be sample one here. So counter argument are like much nonsense. And uh, <laughs> I think this is uh, like three or four. Yeah, I, actually I would also agree that sample four is so far the best sample uh, I've ever seen because um, as Harry, as Harry Z has suggested, like three different, three different examples, they are suggesting, uh, they are uh, representing like different aspects of the like venturing to the unknown, from the like business to the um, like agricultural base as kind of historical, and also the um, like the daily, uh, daily basis. And speaking of, uh, I have to speak, of, I have to speak back to the sample three. <laughs> okay. Um, I, I'm not here really to criticize the sample three because um, I think the examples here are uh, kind of logical. I, we we can't really like criticize it because only because like venturing to the unknown is not like really uh, explicitly stated uh, like linked to the um, 
um, you know, taking the risk. But actually, there is one point I want to uh, criticize about. Um, we can we can look at the first paragraph, the very first paragraph. Like in the hook, um, the author talks about like two two different kind of taking taking the risk. Um, one is like beneficial to the society, and the other is like detrimental to the society. And it's kind of like balanced because um, there's no there's not really um, a better a better one. And the author also said that as we will never know the benefits or the losses before we try something new, nobody can claim whether we should venture into the unknown. Then he and then he also directly linked to the like all the possible detrimental. Um, there's a very weak logical link between um, the hook and the thesis statement. So um, the author might uh, might need to improve this logical link a bit, and I think he will gain. Um, a better score after improving this. Okay, good. Are there any uh, final thoughts? Uh, maybe we can all agree uh, which sample was perhaps the strongest of the five samples. Did we all agree on a number? Four was the strongest. And what score would we have given four? Would we have given it a six or a five? We, uh, let's raise our hand if we gave uh, sample number four a one for one. That's six points. Okay. All right, so most of us gave it a one for one. Did anyone give it a one four zero or a one three one? Okay. All right. Hopefully, you can go home and look at sample four and see what you really liked about it. And when we come to write our own argumentative essay, um, for further practice next week for, for our grade, uh, you can apply what uh, Sample 4 did to your own essays and uh, maybe avoid some of the mistakes that um, uh, the other uh, samples perhaps made or didn't make. Thank you so much for your engagement today. Yeah, thanks everyone, Temple Lord's mine. <laughs> <laughs> if, you, yeah. if you didn't know by now. Um, so I will see you bright and early tomorrow morning. We're going to um, <laughs> Thank you for your time. Thank you. I just thought it would be fun out here. Yeah, so you've uh, situated fencing in a more historical context and then placed it into how it fits into society today, right? Yeah. Yeah, so that's much better, as opposed to just saying that someone invented fencing. Okay, you, you've shown that how it's developed over time, how it's developed as, a, as not only a sport, but how, you know, where its origins came from. So I like that much better than, than what you had before. Whatever the great knight spirits embodied the fencing, inherited it from the ancient battle. Yeah, so you've, you've spoken about the historical context and then you've brought it back to, to uh, its relevance today, which I really like.
Um, let, let's just think of uh, this whole paragraph, uh, the, the joy of in the whole passage. Um, yeah, so you've shown how um, taking something as dangerous and as uh, you know commonplace in society historically, like sword fighting, and how that um, you've made that into like a sport, which uh, was a risk. Do you think that's a risk? Taking something so dangerous and putting it into yeah. society, that's a risk, right? Yeah, that's or venturing point. into the unknown. Yeah. So that works really well. Do you have a counter argument here? Uh, yeah, I my complete argument is uh, this one. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, it's dangerous, it might be done in some depth. Um, and yet people do it anyway, and uh, it, it has that link to the past, which is a really good point to make. Good, I think it's fine. Okay, we're going to practice this again next week, um, but the, the next week one is going to be for a grade, so uh, you can uh, uh, develop your arguments a bit uh, further than next week. Okay. Sounds good, right? Okay. Good. Yes. Excellent. Keep it up. I'll see you tomorrow morning. <laughs>